Hey guys, welcome back to another Architect React, and today I have an exciting game for you, and it's called Age of Empires. It's a series of game that is a real-time strategy game. The game involves you starting from a blank slate, a piece of land, and as a worker, you build farmlands and you develop a housing community. And as you're building these housing communities, you have several advancements that are being occurred in the actual game. One of the most fascinating element about the game is as you grow, you learn to utilize your resources and you go through military conflicts. Some of these military conflicts are historical context. You might be fighting as a Greek, Egyptian, or Roman. Again, this is from a bird's eye view. Along this campaign, you are able to acquire other people's resources. You're able to undermine other people's defenses or their lack of strategy, the lack of barricades, the lack of ev evolution when it comes to technology, or you develop faster than they did. And you take advantage of that and the game is further complex because then you have a multiplayer mode. You can play against other people online. And as you do that, you eliminate other opponent and you can play against worldwide. Now, the thing that fascinates me the most about this game is the fact that you are urban planning. If you're playing it as a layman's man that doesn't have any strategy, you will pick or opt out to just organically grow your civilization to their max peak. And you're not playing against anyone. You're just playing with yourself and you're just pretty much going as far out to see how far you can evolve. You can go as far as space ages or you can relive in historic events. Now, if you were to put that aside and you competed against others, you would go and opt out for a planned community. You would go strategically pushing out your barricades. And this got me thinking, like how does a city form? And there's two ways. One is organic way of growing a city and one is a planned community. And we're seeing both in our time. When it comes to organic cities, the fact that you have cities like Paris, what makes them a organic city is the constant meandering. Some of the paths in the streets are being produced by simple horse paths, or this is where farmland used to be. Now this is a plaza. And all of these various things bring character to the city. A lot of the olden cities were built around organic communities. Communities were founded on a town center, mosque, church, basilica, whatever the, whatever the centralized theme was, that was encompassed by market tradings. You had market buildings that surrounded that area. And then from there, you had residential housing and those housing either had gatherers or hunters and they would go out whatever they were able to bring in and as these communities grows so did these organic cities and more and more people became interdependent upon each other and the civilization grew as we know it right when it comes to a planned community and that's a grand scheme idea and it's been going around since frank lloyd wright since the 1950s or the 1940s people have been theorizing a utopia a dystopia a building that is pretty much around a central idea and it encompasses an X amount of people. It lacks that flexibility of an organic structure. It lacks that character that the there's no sense of accountability when it comes to the growth. How will the actual city grow out? So for example, if you have a planned community for 9 million residents, like the line Neon project, if you're looking at that project, what happens when you reach maximum capacity? Do you simply stop? population growth? Do the people stop having children? Do the old people not die? Like, what are we looking at when we come to that threshold, right? But an organic community continues to grow. As we say, Houston is continuously sprawling out. So how do you compensate the negatives and the positives of the two community? So one of the things I want to look at is analyzing cities as a whole. A lot of times our cities are hybrid of an organic community and a planned community. And when you put these two things together, something phenomenal happened. You have a bunch of nodes of concentration. Give you an example, when it comes back to Houston, is you have downtown Houston that becomes a work center. Then near it is Midtown. Then even if you go as far as outskirts, you have city center, you have vintage park, you have woodlands, you have all of these various pockets of area that is 
pretty much are centralized or this is where people gravitate towards and then the rest of them become surrounding web of a city and you can look this out throughout multiple stages of cities that we know that grow organically you have let's say the state of colorado you go through aspen you go through vale and all of these moments that you have along the way these nodes are simply connected not even by a web but a simple one road highway that leads you to another community center and then it goes to another community center we're looking at organic cities what do they have that is a con for them that is not working out for them now when you have a city that sprawls out in this nature you have lack of efficient land use you have a bunch of pockets that are going to be undeveloped and they're going to be developed by future users but until the city becomes dense enough or that land actually has utility that people have a purpose for it to be used right there's a lack of density then that pocket is dismissed and it creates a lot of holes throughout the city there's a lot of traveling distances on organic cities Likewise, if you were to look at a planned community, although they are restricted by their population size, it is a very controlled environment. So you have very high efficiency. A lot of the things that planned communities are centered around or those communities, they have a lot of walkability. Like if you were to look at Brasilla in Brazil, or if you were to look at Chandigarh in India, these cities have an idea of where residents are going to be in the first place where is everything going to be located so there's no terms of oh let me go ahead and ad add an additional building there now things like zoning can control the growth of the city but at the same time you will still have those efficiencies there's no doubt about it that we need cities in the future and we'll continue to become interdependent and socially tied together as a web but what is the future of the city and what's the future of urban planning and my reaction to this game was this is a very very good look at how resources are managed throughout the entire city why we need to buy our belt not everyone can build a belt not everyone can build their shirts and so on and so forth so as we're interconnected i want to know what your thoughts are when it comes to the interconnected nature of cities. And if there are any cities that you want me to analyze, I would love to do so. Until next time, guys. Follow for more content.